Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today, we're working on a Porsche 911 Targa 1997. I'm getting some footage for the owner, so I thought I would also share it with the audience here on the YouTubes. So we pretty much, uh, we have the wheels, the wheel wells, and some other areas, including the interior, we got that started, and we're just about to get to the paint. So I thought I would share that uh, job with you. As you can see here, we are getting things nice and clean and tidy, and we're gonna coat just about everything um, with our polycylosane coating, and we're gonna put some PPF on here as well to guard from rock chips. We do have some minor disassembly going on. Depending on the job, we do major, and maybe, on the other hand, minor uh, disassembly to get to all of the painted surfaces to polish them, clean them, and protect them. Here you can see a little bit of what we're going after. There's some scratches, there's some water spots, there's some love marks, a little bit of hazing, a little bit of dullness. The paint is not a little, you know, it's in decent shape. There's some yellowing going on here. We did pull old paint protection film that's been on there for probably a good decade or more, and we're going to replace that with some new stuff, and we'll shave the, uh, the, the top coat, top layer, or clear coat down until that yellowing has been improved, and we'll go around and perfect. Well, there's no such thing as perfection, but we'll get this paint as close to it as we possibly can in a timely manner. To get numbers behind what we're seeing before and then completely after the job. When it comes to paint depth, that's important as to how far we're gonna go with the cutting and the correction part. And it's pretty consistent all the way around except for two areas uh, that have been resprayed and repaired. And there's plenty of material to work with. This is uh, clear coated. They started to transition in the late 80s to the, through the early 90s. This is late 90s and is clear coated. Right here is a section, the pillar that has been repaired and resprayed at one time. On the other side, the other quarter panel, you're going to see how it jumps up and uh, you'll know where there's filler and also a respray and it returns right back down to uh, the middle of the three mil depth. Now we want to take a look and see where we're starting when it comes to gloss. We're looking at uh, between 90 and 95 gloss units. We want to boost that up over into the triple digits. I personally like to stay away from the touch-up vials you could pick up at AutoZone or locally and I go to a body shop supply and have a pint or a quart mixed up exact match with the color codes. We have some rock chips to take care of, some that are recent, some that have, uh, there was an attempt to fill them and we'll do those over. After letting the touch-up dry, jumping around, getting to the engine compartment and the interior and finishing the fender wells, it's time for the correction. We're going to use the Sonax cut and finish. We're going to try to do this in one step. If not, we'll just maybe add a, a finishing step to it. But before we get started with the correction, we're going to protect all of these gorgeous, uh, new-looking 
rubber grommets and seals. So we're just gonna do that with masking tape. We're, we're not gonna tape it up like we're painting it. We're gonna do it as um, efficiently as we can, as quickly as we can, cut down the time on the job. And just get these areas protected in case a backing plate or a pad bumps up against them. As part of the disassembly, we'll remove uh, any badges that we can. We're gonna take off the bumperettes uh, and we'll see if we come across anything else that has to be removed to get to all of the painted surfaces. Uh, this one here, we're not going to do major disassembly, so that'll save a little bit of time as well. Let's get to the paint correction. I'm going to team up that cut and finish with just a standard foam um, cut pad. You can get these just about anywhere. With my furry little buddy here keeping an eye on me, we're going to work our way all the way around the vehicle and we're going to be swapping out polishers smaller and smaller as we get into the tighter and tighter areas. When we are through with the paint correction, we'll remove the masking tape. We're going to coat over everything, including those rubber grommets and seals. Keep them nice and dark and rich looking. Very important to grab your favorite panel prep and remove any polishing oils from the correction stage. Time for protection. The first layer is going to be the PPF, always the paint protection film. There can be nothing that gets between the adhesive from the film and your clean naked paint. So we're gonna do some bumper pieces and some other small pieces, including the shark fin protecting the uh, wide flared out uh, rear quarter fender flares and some other pieces.
Now for the coating, and we're going to go over everything. We're going to go on top of the film we just laid down and uh, the painted surfaces, chrome surfaces, whatever we come across in the exterior of this gorgeous Porsche. We're going to use Blue Collar 7. This is the most concentrated coating that we do have. This will get you closer to that five years of protection, the longer durability, and maybe beyond, depending on how it's stored. Uh, I urge you to try it. Even though it is more concentrated, much more concentrated, it's still easy to use. There's going to be a little bit of a fight that it wants to give, a little bit of tackiness, but that's the trade-off when you want something more stable, more durable, uh, but still very simple. I'd like you to try it. I know you can do it. You can apply it just about anywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do, use the word Porsche, P-O-R-S-C-H-E, of course. Type in Porsche as a code and you will get it for a fantastic price because I want you to be able to try it. Depending on your environment, depending on the temperature, the humidity, you're going to leave it on there as long as you can. Uh, you're going to feel it get tacky. You're going to see it uh, give you that rainbow color, that signature rainbow color that uh, it's an indication you're it's about time to start wiping it off and I have two microfibers to do that I can wipe it onto half of this Porsche hood here before it's starting to get too tacky and uh, then I wipe it off the first one to pick up as much of the transfer solution as I can the second one to buff to perfection of course Continue this process all the way around the car in areas uh, the same size that I worked on the hood here. And then you're going to let it cure. Cure time is going to be a full 24 hours or more if you can without exposing the vehicle to moisture or free-flowing water, rainfall, especially washing it. So here at, uh, at our shop, we do not skimp out on the customers. Every square inch that is painted will get polished and coated when requested. Uh, we may not do the polishing part, but when we do a coating, the coating goes on all of those hard surfaces. When we crack open a bottle, we're gonna use all of it, or as much as we can. With everything coated, protected, and starting to cure, we're going to start to reassemble the vehicle, starting with the wheels and all the other little things, the logos, the emblems, the bumperettes, and, and everything that we've removed from the car. Everything is pretty much back together at this point. Time for some of the smaller details, but important ones. While we have it raised in the air, I like to get the tire shine on so I can spin that wheel and get every square inch of the tire. I like that 3D matte um, tire dressing protectant. It is a coating, but they all kind of uh, get me to the two, three, four week point here in my area. Let's get this thing back down on the ground. for the cherry on top and this will help to, to guard the coating as it cures for the next few weeks with a coating uh coatings can cure up to 30 days yeah you can get them wet and wash them after a week or so but um, they do take some time to cure fully 100 percent and the slickness and the gloss will increase through that time period we're going to use bc3 blue collar 3 that's our polysilazane topper or standalone can be used many ways 
And I'll tell you what, we'll include this one as well. So Blue Collar 7 and Blue Collar 3 will both be able to be purchased uh, at a special price for just you, just YouTube. This isn't going to go in a group or anything, just for you guys and use that code word Porsche. What do you think? Um, I think it looks fantastic. I know the owner's going to be happy. This footage is for the owner. I would like to thank him for entrusting us. Um, he does have a nice collection of these things and they are all gorgeous. And he trusts us to let him let us take care of them. And we really, truly appreciate that. We never take that trust for granted. Okay, before we close out the video, let's get some numbers as to where we are now. It is fresh, and that kind of throws some of the numbers off uh, the, you know, the beam that refracts back up into the tool. Sometimes gets thrown off a bit when it's fresh, but this is where we are, and it will uh, increase slowly as the coating and the protectants cure. This is right where we want to be. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video.